February 2024 it will be full of joy for someone Amen. whose hallelujah can be louder than that. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Lara, we are welcome once again to the King's Palace. Very short one, but uh, you are welcome. Come on, let's celebrate our beloved sister all the way from Nigeria and Africa. <laughs> Glory be to God. Pastor Benga is here with Mama as well. Thank you from Nigeria, all the way from Nigeria. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have many grace and anointing from Africa this, um, this month of February. Because in the second service, the Bamiloyes will be here. <laughs> Glory be to God <laughs> for the 60th Thanksgiving of Mommy Gloria. Hallelujah. Her theme for the month of February is seed time. And whenever I hear seed time, I know my harvest is on the way. You will not miss your own in the name of Jesus. But the message in this first service is, is the one that um, if I were going to follow um, homiletics you know, as the heart of preaching, you know, I would have chosen a different topic <laughs> except that you know, I was constrained very closely to the message in this first service. And as I meditated about it, I think it must be for me and maybe one more person. Now, if that is you, then say a big amen. amen. But you don't even know what it is. <laughs> because I think it's an admonition, a warning, and a an instruction because it simply says don't waste another chance that's why I believe God must be very intentional <sighs> Genesis 8 22 Genesis 8 22 while the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat winter and summer and day and night shall not cease don't waste another, time, another chance. Everyone makes mistakes at some point. But when someone decides to forgive you and gives you another chance, you should grab it with both hands because you might not get a third one. Second chances or another chance are basically new opportunities that we should take advantage of. Every day is a new opportunity. You can build on yesterday's success, put its failures behind you, and start over again. Second chances or another chance do not come, I mean, do come our ways just like trains. They arrive and depart quickly. What we do with it when it arrives matter to our destiny. I'll be brief this morning because once it's an instruction like that, you just give the instruction and quickly <laughs> wrap it up. Now, two Bible heroes got another chance, but had two different dispositions and two different destinations. These two heroes, they had many similarities in their life's experiences, but one serious difference in their disposition to a second chance or another chance. And that made a huge difference in their destinations. I'm sure by now you are wondering, who are these heroes? Samson and David. Samson killed a lion, Judges 14, 5 to 6. David killed a lion and the bear, 1 Samuel 17, 36. One similarity. Samson was knocked down by lust for a woman. Judges 16, 20 to 21. David was knocked down by the lust for a woman. I thought similarity, they were both anointed. But then, their disposition to another chance or a second chance became the difference major difference between the two of them and that in itself determined their destinations. 
Your disposition to life determines your destination in life. Samson got a second chance, but he blew it. In Judges 16, 21 to 22, Judges 16, 21 to 22, allow me to read it from the New Living Translation. So, so the Philistines captured him and gouged out his eyes. They took him to Gaza where he was bound with bronze, bronze chains and forced to grind grain in prison. Verse 22, but before long, his hair began to grow back. What a chance. What did he do with the chance? The moment he felt that power came back again and God has come back to him, he went for a revenge. He said, just give me this power just this time. All I want to do with it is to make sure that I kill all these people who have been tormenting me and I die with them. Uh, if that was David, he would behave differently. Because when David got his second chance, he said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew our spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I renew our spirit within me. That was David. That was what he did with the second chance. But for <laughs> Samson, not at all. The fall is not your end. What you do with the second chance determines the end. You know, somebody said, I, I did then what I knew how to do. Now that I know better, I do better. The wasters of another chance or second chance are wasters of the future. Samson was a waster of the second chance and he wasted his life in the process. I will never die and you will never die in the midst of your enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Judges 16, 20, 29, and 30. Judges 16, 20 to 30. Then Samson prayed to the Lord. Sovereign Lord, remember me again. Oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up the temple, pushing against them with both hands. He prayed. Listen to the prayer. Let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had during his entire lifetime. He died in the midst of his enemy. David refused to die in the midst of his enemy. Two people with another chance, different disposition, and then different destination. Losers play the blame game when they are presented with another chance. Do not play the blame game so you don't end up the Samson way. Because for Samson, he did not see any fault whatsoever in how he got into trouble. David knew he missed it. He honed up to his error. And that helped him with his second chance. Passing the buck when you have a second chance makes you an ultimate loser. And somebody said, if you find an excuse, don't pick it up. Failures are experts at making excuses. When you make a mistake and we make an excuse for it, you have made two mistakes. When Samson got the second chance, he refused to take responsibility for his foolishness. They want him not to marry Delilah. I said, no, I must marry Delilah. I must marry the daughter of the Philistines. He made no mention of his carelessness. He made no mention of his sins. He made no mention of his foolishness. That's what happens with people 
who have excuses for their mistakes and their errors, when they have another chance, they make another mistake. Another mistake. If somebody is gracious enough to give you a second chance, you shouldn't need a third one. David got a second chance and he began with repentance, taking full responsibility for his foolishness. Psalms 51, 10, 11, and 12. Create in me a clean heart. My heart has been messed up. So, Lord, now create me in me a clean heart. Oh, God, renew a right spirit within me. My spirit has been messed up. I knew a new one. Cast me not away from thy presence. I deserve to be cast away, but please don't. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I know you should, but please don't. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I lost joy. Please restore it. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Then, listen to what he said. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Something should have said give me this chance one more time. I know you have power to restore my eyes and this time around I will serve you like never before. No. A second chance doesn't mean anything if you didn't learn from your first. A second chance presents an opportunity for thanksgiving. I can get another chance. Do you know when the power began to come back, Samson should have lifted his hands and said, Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my father. I'm so grateful. What another chance? Even with the blind eyes, even if you don't restore my eyes, that's okay. But that I can, you know, represent you again, that I can serve you again, that I can witness again, that's good enough. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Say, no. No, that has defined his life. Because in Judges 15, when he killed 1,000 people with the job of an ass, everybody knows that there is no way one man can kill. It's not, this is not bomb. This is job of an ass. 1,000 people at the same time. There is no way Samson did that. God did that for him. But he said, hi, Samson. Heap upon heap. Hi, Samson. Had killed 1,000. Heap upon heap. He was just boasting. And finally, he was tested. The job bow of an ass that God anointed for him to use, he threw it away. He said, God, can you, you want me to die of test? See me now, I'm testing. Won't you do something, Lord? And God told him what to do. Go and get the, the job bow you took away. Get it, water will come from it. You know, he drank from it. He said, hey, very good. And then he named the place the elevation of job bow. If that was David... He will compose an hymn. He will sing a song. David will dance. He will clap. But that was in Samson. And people who cannot thank God, somehow they, 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 the enemy fries their brain because they can't think. Because if you can think, why do you want to die in the midst of your enemy? Samson did not see the opportunity for thanksgiving when he got the second chance. Every second chance seeker can start over. For his life's mistakes are initial drafts and not the final version. Don't make excuses. Make progress. Admitting errors clears the scores and moves you forward. You can fall down many times, but you won't be a failure until you say that someone has pushed you. Never mind who you praise, but be very careful whom you blame. Adam and Eve set this bad example when they were presented with another chance. They played the blame game, lost the glory, and were covered in shame. What a tragedy it was. You know their story. Adam, who told you you are naked? Hey, I'm naked, I can't see. But it's not my fault. See, all this while I was here, no problem. I didn't ask for a wife. God, you brought this woman to me. This woman you brought to me made me <laughs> to eat and naked. God said, is that so? Okay, Eve, what happened? Well, you should have warned us that there's a serpent. You didn't tell us. If, if only you told us that there's a serpent, there would be no problem. Their problem wasn't that it was a problem to eat the forbidden fruit. But if they told God that we missed it, please, Lord, we've disappointed you. But we are so sorry. Please give us another chance. But no was a blame game. So I close this morning. God is speaking to someone. 
He's saying, don't waste another chance. God is about to give someone another chance. And he's saying, don't waste another chance. Let us rise. Create in me Oh Lord And renew our right spirit Within me Create in me A clean heart Oh Lord And renew our right spirit Within me Cast me this morning is there someone you just know somehow that god is talking to you because you need another chance in one area or the other perhaps you blew the first chance and you are the one needing the second chance i just want to pray for you i don't have enough time to bring you forward but just lift your hand up i need another chance i wasted the first one but i can't afford to miss this one okay so lift your hands up now the rest of us we can pray i mean i, I need one more. i need a chance another chance in certain area of my life but if, if that defines you let's pray these prayers together and say father forgive my error of the past and i thank you for another chance i thank you for this chance i thank you i thank you for the opportunity of another chance oh forgive me my, my error my mistake of the past and I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you for this other chance you are giving me this month. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, say, Father, let my 2024 be error-free. May I talk to him? Error-free 2024. Error-free. Let my 2024 be error-free. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you have not given your life to Christ, and you have had the call unto salvation before, and you didn't answer, that was a big error. You have another chance. Maybe you are even the one that God is talking to, and say, don't waste this chance of giving your life to Jesus. So if that is you, you are welcome to surrender your life to Jesus this morning. You won't die in the midst of your enemy like something in Jesus' name. Whether you're in the virtual church or here, all you need to do is just to raise your hand so we can be sure that there's somebody like that. All right, I don't seem to see anyone. I will assume we are all born again. Or maybe they're in the virtual church. If you are there, I'm praying for you that the Almighty God will forgive all your sins. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we accept you into the family of God in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. Please, for every one of us, make this year error free in the name of Jesus. We promise only you we take the glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now go ahead and give the Lord a big, big hand of praise. And there you may be seated. Hallelujah.